welcome again to the endovascular.tv. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce you Dr. Varkoe, who um, is uh, an endovascular specialist from Australia, from the other part of the world. And um, as you may know, the, the main topic of the Congress is the unmet needs in endovascular therapy. So my first question, of course, is uh, which are the main um, unmet needs in endovascular therapy? Which is the future? Which is the future we have to face? Well, that's a pretty broad question, of course, but I guess that's yeah. why we're all here. Um, just to focus on lower limb revascularization to begin with, as a vascular surgeon, I think most of us come from a background of femoropopliteal bypass, tibial bypass surgery, which we know has uh, great success. And we've moved somewhat away from that because of the morbidity associated with those procedures. Yeah. But there's one thing that those bypass surgeries still offer that we can't quite meet, and that's the durability, I think most people would agree. So if I had to name one thing in lower limb disease that's most unmet, it would have to be the durability, the patency of the procedures that we currently offer patients. So in the future, will we perform still open surgeries or will we move all patients to endovascular therapy? That's a good question. Uh, if you had have asked me that a month ago, I would have said that I'm moving towards a completely endovascular solution for lower limb disease. Um, but I had three FEMPOP bypasses or versions of it over the last month, which made me realise I think there will always be a place for some kind of bypass surgery in lower limb disease. But I'm hoping that as our durability of procedures improves, that that will become fewer and further between. So we will move uh, to endovascular therapy more and more. And um, what about the future in, in endovascular devices? We have to improve what we have or we need something new? Well, I think all the time we're improving and developing pioneering new forms of treatment. Uh, definitely what we're seeing at the moment is a move towards leaving nothing metallic behind in our arteries. And I think pretty much across the board, people understand that that should be the gold standard from here on in. Uh, there's a big move towards drug-coated balloon technology. Uh, but personally, I think there's always going to be a place for scaffolding in the lower limb. And my own feelings are that we're heading more in a bioresorbable scaffold platform direction, possibly with a combination of drug in there as well. But that, to me, seems like the most logical way of moving forward in the lower limb disease. But there is nothing really new to have to change everything? Or are we just improving a little more and more what we have? Uh, because you sometimes have the, 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 sen the, the sensation that um, we are always using the same devices, just with little improvements, with little new things. I don't know mm -hmm. if we have to ha have a revolution in the, in the vascular therapy. Or yeah, it's a good thought. I mean, you know, we, we often work in terms of technique and t technology development by tinkering and improving what we already have. And most of our mindsets are centered around improvements that can be made to things that we already do. But a complete paradigm shift away in another direction um, is a great way to think about it. And I guess that's what meetings like CITE are all about, you know, changing the way we think, broadening our mindset. So I'm going to give that a little bit of thought over the next 24 <laughs> hours and hopefully I can come back to you at the end of this meeting with a much better answer for you. Okay, and um, what about uh, trainees, trainees in, in vascular surgery? Um, should we, um, should trainees learn um, everything? Should learn open surgery and endovascular? Or should directly move to, to endovascular procedures? Or um, when a, a trainee uh, surgeon comes to us and, and wants to discover something new or wants to uh, invent something new, what should we, you say to him? Um, go to the limb, go to the stents, discover a new stent, discover or invent a new uh, form of stent? Uh. I say go away and discover something new and exciting and come and tell me about <laughs> it and I'll put the trademark <laughs> patent down and we'll work together. But yeah, to answer your question seriously, I mean, it was a two-part question, you know, how do we train our trainees in the endovascular era? I think that they have to continue to learn open surgery. They will always fall back on those skills. And the skills of sewing arteries and veins together, uh, uh, once they're learned, they're never forgotten. You know, you don't suddenly forget how to do a bypass or how to do an open aortic aneurysm. So I think we have to persist at training our trainees. And I guess the more important question is how we achieve that in an era that's predominantly endovascular. Yeah. And I think what's going to happen is we're going to end up with more open surgical centres of excellence that maybe are referred to more complex open surgical work 
and that would be an ideal place for our trainees to visit and learn those skills ongoing. Because certainly in the future, the majority of centres will be endovascular specialist centres and they'll have plenty of access and, and exposure to those sorts of procedures down the track. Sure. Yeah. And uh, finally, uh, a message for patients. Uh, sometimes we see a lot of uh, some patients that get some information uh, in internet uh, mm -hmm. uh, about procedures, about uh, techniques, and um, they are very confused. Uh, so which uh, message can we give to our patients or for example, our Claudican patients that uh, want to solve their problem with a simple operation and, uh, and a durable operation, and sometimes we have problems to tell them that uh, this is not so simple. How can we uh, teach our patients? Yeah, I think I see this all the time, you know, patients coming with information, and I don't think you can fight that. I mean, the information revolution is upon us. Patients will seek this information out on the internet and personally I think we just need to accept that and move forward and work on strategies by which we encourage them to take that information and bring it to us. So rather than uh, reprimand them for seeking information on Google, I'd rather put my own information on Google, have them encouraged to come to me and say, look, at the end of the day, information is good but you need a specialist who can gather and distill the information and individualise it to you and walk you through the process that leads you to better health. Embrace it rather than push it away, I say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, this is the, one of the, um, of the topics of the endovascular.tv, so thank you very much and um, enjoy the dinner. My pleasure, thanks for having me. <laughs> thanks. Yeah.